Hello, my name is Jay Dewalt that just introduced. I'm COO at ARIA, and ARIA, it's ARIA NLG. We're a specialist in natural language generation, and it's just a pleasure to uh, have the opportunity to speak with you today. Welcome, welcome. We're gonna talk about NLG, but also talk about all the natural language technologies and how they fit together, and also our philosophy of how we think natural language technologies are really here to augment the human not replace humans, but augment them. And that's what AI is all about. If I figure this out. It's not going. All right there. That'd be a good idea. That's why I was hitting on that was too big. <laughs> so what we're seeing in the market is um, a lot of adoption right now of natural language generation, predominantly in financial services, banking, investment banking, insurance, but also pharma are kind of the leading um, verticals that are really rapidly adopting NLG. And but today I'll talk mostly about banking and because that's the topic of this track. When I talk about NLG, what do I mean by NLG? Natural language generation. Natural generally is really taking structured data and generating language, human language, from that structured data in near real time. And it's a technology that is used to really um, give communications in human language. It's how we communicate as humans. And so NLG is really taking that unstructured, I'm sorry, the structured data and generate human language from that data. How does it all fit together? Um, you know, we hear, you hear a lot of, you read articles every day, you know, all the news, media, journals, you know, there's what's called natural language technologies is, a, is an emerging term. It's kind of an umbrella term for natural language understanding, natural language processing, natural language generation. In the early days, these were all kind of pretty discrete technologies. You know, I, I first got involved with the first natural language technology in the 90s when I was at Lockheed Martin and we used natural language understanding with the NSA, National Security Agency, to understand messages that could have been terrorist messages, to understand the information. That was kind of the first of the three technologies that really got commercialized. Then natural language processing was really began to emerge as ways to look at sentiment and emotions. Then generation was kind of the third one to be commercialized, to actually take structured to unstructured, to language. The first two are all focused on taking unstructured to structured. You're seeing more convergence of these words in, in a lot of the articles and, and journals that you read right now. You're starting to see a lot of NLT as kind of the umbrella term. Some articles you're starting to see NLP used as an umbrella term. But, but it originated originally as around sentiment um, and was indiscreet. But now you're seeing a lot of places use that word much more umbrella. But there's always these three pieces underneath. And, and it's all about taking the first two, understanding and processing are really taking that language to structured. They were the first to be commercialized. And, and I use the analogy a lot when little kids, you know, most of you are probably parents here, maybe not everybody. But little kids, what do they learn first? They un learn to understand commands. Understand it. Hmm. Mom told them to do something. They begin to understand. Later, they start to understand sentiment of those commands, natural language processing. What's the emotion behind it? How mad is she at them? You know, they learn to qu quickly respond to emotion and sentiment. And it's not till later as they grow up that they really start to be able to explain themselves, communicate in language. NLG is really the communicate. And then they go to school and they go to college and they learn how to do it better and better and better to explain information in words. So there's kind of three, three technologies there. They're frequently used in conjunction with each other. When I say in conjunction with each other, 
you know, different end-to-end -end processes may use all three, may use in the ones independently, or all three in an end-to-end -end process. Um, you know, there's various inputs. Inputs may be in the form of spoken words or written words. We may need to transform those words into structured data so it can be processed, analyzed, processed. Um, there may be even technologies further down where you know, yet the first layer may be speech recognition, you know, SST technologies to get it to a format that then can be processed by NLU and NLP layers for, for different end-to-end -end use cases. And then the final phase is the NLG, getting it back from the structured information back into unstructured for human words, human consumption. Because we as humans communicate best in words. You know, I'm accused all the time of talking too much in, in words, not sign language, not, not numbers, but in words, it's what we as humans best understand. You start looking at different use cases, you know, in, in finance, um, you know, whether those are FP&A or operational or, or risk or AML or SAR, different use cases may use different phases of this. But we always think at the end, the best way to communicate is in language. And that's the NLG layer. And, and it's because, you know, we as humans, we, we, we think in, wor in, um, in words. It's how we communicate. Language is the last mile of how systems need to communicate. It's we as humans best understand data when it's articulated in words. And, and, and you know, we, we talk about NLG, there's really two parts to NLG. It's what we call the NLG pipeline. There, there's the first part that is what we call narrative analytics, performing the analytics on the data to determine what to say. Second major phase is what we call cognitive linguistics, how to say it in good language. And to be able to do that in near real time. Um, you know, example, you know, if I drew a bunch of numbers on this board right here and said, explain them to me, what would you do? Well, your brain would instantly, without even thinking, start scanning those numbers, looking for biggest outliers. Some of you might actually even do standard deviations in your brain to say, oh, that one, that's, I'm going to talk about these first three, but not those next ones because they're too, they're, they're too big a deviation or too small. But you're doing all these analytics in your brain. That's partly what NLG is, the, the, the narrative linguistics part of, the analytics part of determining what to say, what, what numbers are important, what numbers are outliers, what numbers are anomalies, what numbers are trends. And then the cognitive linguistics is, all right, now that I know what I want to talk about, how do I say it in good, proper language? Whether that's English, French, German, don't care. So there's the two parts here. And it's to be able to do that in near real time when there's maybe thousands of rows and columns or tens of thousands of rows and columns. Humans just can't digest that and, and then articulate in, in near real time. So it's all about this analysis of the data that we talk about. And there's kind of these different layers of the analysis. It's the, the raw data, the repositories, where is that data stored, and the stages by which that analysis needs to occur. But that final stage is really, again, all about the communications of the insights. How, how is that data communicated in human language, in words, that we as humans can quickly digest because why do we have that data? Well, for one reason, to be able to make decisions on it, right? To make decisions on, for the business, to drive business decisions faster, quicker, more consistent, greater quality, all, all, all those important attributes of why we have the data. So the better we can understand it quicker it, it is essential. You know, just looking at this in, in, in kind of flow diagram, you know, most organizations are taking their big data, they're analyzing the data, and then a whole bunch of humans interpret it. Um, very important. 
but in automating those capabilities of, of really taking that analysis and that NLG process, analyzing the data in machine speed, real time, well, I use the word near real time, not to be confused with military real time, near real time, and then generating the language from that data as, as if the expert wrote it. And what does that do? It frees up those experts to do higher level activities, especially in today's world. You know, I, I don't know about you guys, like I can't hire people fast enough. You know, we're in a growth mode. You can't find labor out there. <laughs> you can't find people. You know, I got all these headhunters helping us hire, we can't get people. Well, so what do you have to do? You know, a couple years ago it was all about cost savings, cost reduction. Now it's about making your, your people more empowered, taking some of those mundane things away so they can focus on the bigger picture, the, the things that really impact the business. And, and that's one of the key advantages of um, automation. You know, one of the areas that we see rapidly adopting is really applying NLG on top of the BI layer. It's called augmented analytics. It's one of the key growth areas that we're seeing. It's one of the biggest adoption areas because BI is so heavily adopted already. Not everybody uses BI, but a lot of BI. And then, but BI is only as good as the visuals, having that language on top and augmenting those visuals. It's a key growth area that, that we've been seeing of, of adoption. I talk a lot about um, the importance of augmenting the human, augmenting, you know, freeing people up to do higher level tasks. But as a CEO, COO, you know, I'm, I'm a numbers guy too. You, and all of you have to be because you have to also cost justify everything we do these days. Um, we, we recently did a contract with Forrester to go out to um, seven of our customers and do an ROI analysis. You can get a copy of this report if you like, but it goes into some pretty good detail of seven different customers across finance, insurance, um, and, and pharma customers, rolls them up and creates this aggregate model and, and really does a nice job of looking at some ROIs. But there's pretty extensive ROI in conjunction with freeing people up. So you may, you may want to take a look at that report. It's out on our website. Two applications I'll talk about a little bit that, that we're seeing tremendous um, adoption in. One is automating FP&A and O, FP&A, financial planning, analysis, and operational activities. Um, in probably every one of your organizations, there, there's a lot of FP&A and O, um, wh whether that is looking and generating revenue reports, sales reports, cost expense analysis, um, pretty robotic, yet pretty essential to decision making. Um, prime opportunity to automate and free up people and reduce costs. Um, to generate, you know, a lot of times financial reports, you get them, a lot of organizations, once a month, once a week. Well, if you could add a click of a button, get that report any hour of the day to be able to make quicker, more real-time, near-term decision-making. Um, we have a lot of customers that come back to us and say, well, it's not just the real-time, the near-time, be able to generate reports that I couldn't report, generate before. It took hours, days, weeks, a month in some cases to generate reports. We can now generate it instantly, dynamically, and higher quality because it's less prone to, to human errors. You know, somebody's tired that day and, and make a mistake. So, so the quality, we see a big quality. Um, just as an example, you know, I, I mentioned about BI being one of the key areas that, that we're seeing a lot of adoption of augmenting the visualizations of the BI model. You know, here's, here's an example of you know, the kind of before, after, top right corner, visuals. Visuals are wonderful. Their love. Um, picture tells a thousand words, is the old expression, right? Well, but still, when you look at a visual, as a human, you have to interpret it. And, and, and these are kind of simple visuals. You know, I'm sure you all have some visuals in your organizations that 
man, it takes like PhD to interpret all those bars. Where are they? How, you know, which ones, what's the standard deviations? What's the trends? How does that occurring? Because the visual is two-dimensional, where, where words can be dynamically generated. In, in this scenario, we're using the BI model as the input of the data. In effect, passing that BI model to what we call ARIA Studio Engine, generating the language and pushing the language, the narrative, back into the presentation layer of the BI user interface. And it's dynamic. You can click on any visual, dynamically generate new language. So that model changes, dynamically generate short, -term, short form or long form narratives. Just an example of augmented analytics using NLG to augment the understanding of that information and then exporting that narrative into reports for distribution via PowerPoint, email, whatever. Another key area we're seeing a lot of adoption in financial services is in um, what we call investment analyst. And we actually have a solution around investment analyst. And it's really to do um, portfolio attribution, portfolio assessment, um, to automatically, dynamically generate and identify what we call three lenses, kind of a summary of the portfolio key metrics, um, a, a, a summary of the key data, and then a full detailed report. And, and we can actually show that to you out there. In other words, so in portfolios, you know, or fixed income attribution, either one, we do both. You know, it's, it's tremendous amount of data, tremendous amount of data. And it's constantly changing. The more often the data changes, the more benefit and value there is to NLG because we can dynamically generate the language. Humans take time to analyze that data. So we can dynamically analyze the data, what to say, what are the key drivers, what are the important points to make, generate that language, and push it back to a presentation layer. I'll show you an example. In this particular example, we're using Excel. The other example I used was BI, but it, a lot of us still use Excel. The source data came from the Excel model. Well, the original source probably came from Moody's and, and other, other sources put into an Excel model. Then the Excel model, the data is transferred to ARIA, to our studio. We generate the language and push the language right back into the Excel dashboard. Now we can also push it out to other forms, other formats, other presentation layers. But we can surface the summaries, the key drivers, what changed, uh, all different types of what we call dimensions and measures, what was important to talk about, and then how to say that, the two parts of what's called NLG. A couple um, just quotes, we all like quotes. You know, the, the first one is really from an um, executive at QSR. And they're, they're, you know, they're talking about you know, the value of, to the employee, to, to the executives, to make better decisions at, at higher level. Second one is really about the cost reduction. Be able to do things you couldn't ever do before because it's all about time. You know, the speed at which NLG can generate the insights. You know, McKinsey, um, you know, they, they believe that you know, NLG is going to be a very, very rapidly adopted, significantly growing market. We're seeing it as ARIA. Um, we're one of the few NLG vendors out there that, that do the NLG phase. We, we integrate with a lot of NLU, a lot of NLP for different um, processes. We, we do what's called NLQ, a word I didn't use yet. NLQ is structured language queries, which combines NLU and NLP to take that unstructured data to, into a question to generate a structured set of data that then can be analyzed and then generate the language to response. That's the answer part. So NLQ is the querying part of, of language. And we have that some of that built into Excel, built into um, BI that you can actually query it with um, SL, SLQ technology. You know, but our, our vision is all about, um, you know, these natural language technologies. It's not to replace humans. You know, it, it, we're, 
we're needed. You know, a lot of our customers, depending on the use case, we have some use cases where it's completely automated. The, the final report goes out right out to distribution. You know, we have other use cases where the final report goes right to clients. There's other use cases where the final report needs a human in the loop, we call it. In other words, a human to co-author, you know, that because NLG can only generate language from information that's contained in the data. You can't make stuff up. Well, you don't want it to make up stuff up, at least in the banking sector, right? Um, so it, it's to generate information and insights that are in the data. But certain types of use cases may need, there may be some other insights that are not quantifiable in data. That only a human knows in their brain because it's historical knowledge that's not in the data. Some current event just happened an hour ago that is affecting numbers and needs to be added to the report so you can generate the numeric data, the insights, yet there's still a human in the loop. So, so we believe these are really to augment humans' capacities to perform. You know, the, the, the more we enhance humans' capacity to perform, the more productive, the more effective we are as a company, but more important, as a society, right? And so our mission is, you know, we, we have an expression we call NLG everywhere. Um, I, I've been at ARIA, I guess, five and a half years now. And when I, when I joined, I said, you know, this, is a, this NLG is a technology that literally could change the world. And I still believe that. You know, we still have a, long, a journey to go. Of course, all technologies are on a journey. But it could change the world. Because how do we want to interact? You know, I see people with their computers open. How are they interacting with their data? Well, they're typing on a keyboard, moving a mouse, um, getting it back on a screen. Well, I think it's not that far off. Not that far off. Certainly, a couple of years, I don't know. You know, we're just going to talk to our machines, right? And we're going to use structured querying. We're going to use NL natural language technologies, and we're going to get responses back. We're going to query our data through language, and we're going to get our responses back in language. That's where we're going to be in a few years. I don't know, is that two years, three years, five years, 10 years? I don't know. But it will be NLG everywhere at some point in, in not that distant future. Um, that's the exciting part of um, where, where we think we're headed. You know, where are we today? Where are we going? It's a journey. You know, I just want to close on one last thought about kind of the origins of NLG, because I talk about the NL, the natural language technologies and NLU and NL. And, and NLG has been around a long time. It's really only getting actively commercialized the last three years, two years, five years. Fairly relatively recent compared to NLU and NLP technologies. Um, but now it's being rapidly adopted. Our founders at ARIA actually came from University of Aberdeen. University of Aberdeen is um, a university that specializes in language. And our two founders are professors and if you know this space, you probably know one of them, or his name anyway, P Professor Ehud Ryder, literally wrote the book on NLG. The NLG book he wrote is literally probably in every R&D, every academic NLG researcher's bookshelf. Um, and, and they were the founders of, of our company. But it's, it, but it's, a, a, it's a rapidly changing and growing um, technology area. If you haven't really looked at it, I encourage you to. Um, it's going to have a major impact. Um, we do it. We are a sponsor here. We have a booth out there. Um, come take a look. We've got some pretty cool demos. Encourage you to uh, learn. You know, we're all here to learn. You know, we're learning humans. You know, learn about NLG. It has a, it's going to have a major impact on, on your organizations. If you haven't already looked at it, I encourage you to, uh, to look at it. With that, I think I'm out of time. <laughs>